That's the Kelsos. Wow. What Apparently this month. What? We're brewing a barley wine. That'll be new. So we got big bag of rice hulls. Comes with every box. Liquid yeast on this one. And an ice pack. Imperial yeast. Ale house. A01. They definitely hooked us up this time. Four. Four. Uh, four pack carriers. Uh, like I've told you all before. Think of fast prime for if you're bottling. Oh, move the wait, wait, what's this? Okay, now move the box. Okay, box move. Uh, Paper move. So, you Bobby have bags. a, uh, you have a work lock tablet for, to, to clarify. Uh, like I've told y'all before, it is a double bagged thing of grain to make sure that your grain doesn't go anywhere. An ounce of Willamette and an ounce of Chinook pellet hops. Set of instructions for the all grain. So, uh, Stay coming tuned. soon to y'all, barley wine. This will definitely be a first, I think, for me, you, and Lance. I don't think Lance has ever done a barley wine either. I don't think so. Four to five months of secondary. It'll be ready to drink in six months. Jeez Louise. Six months in secondary. This is our, again, like we've told y'all before, you know, brewing things that we would never think to brew. Barley wine definitely falls under that never. What's going on, y'all? Brandon with Ugly Duckling. The day has arrived. Today is the day that we do the barley wine that y'all saw me and Lori unbox the other day. Um, it's going to be a pretty straightforward brew. be a long secondary process on the fermentation. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of November 2023, and it's going to be February or March before we actually get to try this for the first time. Uh, let me just go over exactly what we're doing here right now. Um, I have a little over six and a half gallons of strike water in here. It's currently coming up to a temperature of 152 degrees. Uh, got a gallon of water in here. That's going to be our sparge water that we're going to go over the top with afterwards. And I got the fermenter here that is currently filled up with water and sanitizer, soaking and sanitizing whenever that's ready to go for us to transfer over to the thing. Y'all seen us use this system before. So I'm not going to really go into depth too much about it. I will take y'all step by step while we're going through this whole brew, though. Um, just so y'all know, the grist bill on this one is going to be 14.25 pounds of English Maris Otter, uh, three quarters of a pound of the Breeze Caramel 80, and a half a pound of Breeze Caramel 20. Um, and then boil additions on the hops. At 60 minutes, we're going to be adding an ounce of Chinook, and at 15 minutes, we'll be adding an ounce of Willamette. Of course, in the last 10 minutes, we'll drop the uh, Warflock tablet for clarity purposes. Uh, yeast, we're going to be dropping two liquid packs of yeast. These, this is Imperial Yeast Ale House 801 um, that we're going to be dropping in there. Um, I believe that's a British ale, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a British ale yeast is what that, what that is. It doesn't say. And this is the first time we use Ale House yeast. So, uh, let me just see how those go. But, uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is, uh, while this is coming up to temperature, bring you over to the other side. Uh, we'll go ahead and mill up all the grain, get it ready to go whenever this comes up to temp so we can mash in. All right. See y'all over there. So here we are on this side of the brewery over here where our 12 gallon system is at and also where our malt mill is at. I'm going to go ahead and mill all this grain up, get it ready to go. So we can go mash in. Water's still coming up the temp. I don't know if you can see that right there. Take the lid off this one. Put it underneath our mill. And we'll get to milling. All right, I'm not going to bore y'all with all of this. I'm going to get this done, and I'll uh, see y'all back down the other side next to the all-in-one system. My helper has arrived. Like a ninja. Like a ninja in the night. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, malt pipe in. There we go. Put the malt pipe in. Start mashing in. You know, I'm going to block y'all like I always do, but it is what it is. I'm sorry, people. That's a lot of grain. This is a lot of grain. This uh, 
this bill, grain bill, is going to basically take this all in one to its limits as far as how much it can hold because it's like 15 and a half pounds of grain. I wish we had smell vision It smells great. Yeah. It's like 15 and a half pounds of grain, and I think the max on this system is 16 pounds. There's nothing so better than the smell of freshly milled grain, freshly poured into hot water. Hot water, yeah. Ooh, we're getting like close to the top of that. Yeah, I see that overflow pipe. Um, on another note, though, another it's a note. Very great grain build, considering that it's it's loose. It's not feeling um, like it's sticking. Well, and some of that is because I learned in the past. I don't do it very often, but I do. I did add um, rice hulls to wow. this one to kind of help with the laudering on it and the filtering. So, like, I don't even know how I'm going to put that screen back on this at this point. I got this. Yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you all what's happening right here. Okay, so y'all see that white cap right there? That is the top of my overflow. Pipe. Max capacity. Uh, we are, yeah, we are as full as full can be. Yeah, we are definitely maxing out all in one system there. We're gonna get this. Are you liking where that's at? No, not nope. yet. Yeah, I, we literally got a big stainless steel whisk for jobs like this. Haha. You like it? Um, you love it? Stick with me. I won't steer you wrong. Don't mind me. I'm just paying attention. Not really. Drawing, drawing. drawing attention. Is that what it is? Yes. We got it all mashed in. So now y'all saw that little white plug that was in there. This is going to be interesting. Ooh. Okay, we're going to take the white plug out. We're going to put the diffuser plate on top. There it goes. And then put this on top, just like that. And we're going to put our lid like that. Get our sparge arm. And then I think I've already explained to y'all before that that diffuser plate, the whole purpose of that diffuser plate is when the sparge arm is in there, when the sparge arm, oh, look at it, it's literally touching the plate. Yeah. When the sparge arm starts starts recirculating the wart, that diffuser plate will spread it out so we don't tunnel through our grain. That way we get a good rinse on the grain as we're, as we're sparging, not sparging, circulating. Okay. That way um, we don't tunnel and we get the best utilization of our sugars and grains. Crack that open, turn that on. I cannot see. It's already fogging over. There you go. It's flowing. We're going. This is a 60 minute mash. And then we're going to do a 10 minute sparge, a gallon of water. Afterwards, we'll bring you back when it's time to rest the graves with that gallon of sparge water. See y'all soon. See y'all soon. Hey y'all, welcome back. The all in one system is singing the song of his people. The song of his people is saying. <laughs> All right, so the mash is done. The 60 minute mash is done. Go ahead and kill. I'm going to kill the wrong one because I always do. That. He always does. We're going to kill the pump. Let that drain out so I don't burn myself with scorching hot work. Yes, please kill don't. Kill that. Kill that. And cool. I'm going to pull this. The bu oh, the. I'm going to watch me pull this, and then I'm going to go run next door to the big brewery and grab the crawfish pot to put this in once it drains. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Well, let that drain for a minute. You can tell that that's a lot of grain because that is a lot of liquid that I can hear draining out. I can't sing the praises of this thing enough because of that lip so that you can drain it like this. Drop a spot because. Uh, so we're going to let this drain out, we're going to give it five minutes or so of dripping and draining, and then we're going to come over the top with the sparge. So now, I'm going to go ahead and... So we're going to sparge over with that gallon of water that I told you all about earlier, at 170 degrees. So it rinses all the grain out. I got it. Uh, we'll let this drain through for 10 minutes. Well, while that's draining through, I'm going to go ahead and come down here to the controller and 
and uh, go ahead and get it started ramping up to boil. That way it just kind of saves us on time. Because again, like I've told you all before, this is a 110 volt system, so it takes it a little while for it to get where it needs to go. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a head start. 60 minutes. 60 minute boil? So we're going to let this finish draining. We're going to pull the pipe, pull the malt pipe off, put it in my big crawfish pot. We're going to go ahead and put the um, hot spider in, get that ready to go, because we do have a 60 minute drop of the Chinook hops. So um, we'll bring y'all back once it gets to a rolling boil and it's time to make that first hot drop. All right, y'all. See y'all in a little bit. Mash is done. Sparge is done. We have come up to a boil. We're currently boiling. We got a 60 minute boil. So at the 60 minute time mark, we have one ounce of Chinook going into the hop spider right now. Okay, we are golden. So we're gonna let this go. The next drop is at 15 minutes. So I'll see you in 45 minutes. For y'all, it'll be one second. But see y'all soon. Bye. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Woo! We are steaming right here. Um, we have 15 minutes left in the boil, so it's time to do our flavor hop drop. Uh, one ounce of Willamette hops. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in here right now. Ooh, y'all. We need smell-o-vision. These smell so good. All right. So, uh... That's done. We'll see y'all back in five minutes uh, when we do our Warflock uh, war ta tablet and server my seeds drop. All right, that was a quick five minutes. Felt like it flew. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drop these in, uh, Warflock tablet and server my seeds, straight into the boil. Almost forgot y'all. <laughs> 10 minutes left in the boil. Have our immersion chiller. We need to put the immersion chiller in the boiling wort so that it uh, starts to sanitize it. It's fighting me right now. There it goes. So that it starts to sanitize it. That way in the last 10 minutes of the ball, it sanitizes the emergen chiller. The emergen chiller is ready to go to cool this wort down, get it transferred over to that fermenter. All right, we'll, we'll see y'all in nine minutes. Later, y'all. All right. All in one is singing us the song of its people again, which means that the boil is done. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get the immersion chiller started, chill this thing down so we can transfer it over to the fermenter. Right now it is currently at 212 degrees. Good thing is right now we're mid-November, it's in the lower 70s outside, so our groundwater is probably 64, 65. Um, so it should chill down pretty rapidly. I'm gonna go ahead and get the water started on it. I know y'all can't really see this too much, but I got lines coming all the way this way into the sink in here. I have a separate faucet in here. Start sending groundwater into the emergent chiller, chilling the wort down, getting it cooled down. I'm going to put the recirculation arm back on it. I'm going to start a whirlpool. It's so one thing I never did show you about this is that I got this cool little tip that I can put on the end of my recirculation arm like that. Turn that on. I'm going to get this whirlpooling so I can get any hops that was still left in this wort. Put it to the center, build up a little cone. That way we're not transferring hops and shrub over to the fermenter. And it'll be recirculating while it's cooling. We'll get this drop down. We're already at 181. Love it when the groundwater gets cool. So we're going to get this cooled down, get it closer to pitching temperature. And we're going to rack it over into the fermenter. We'll bring you all back whenever it's time to start racking it over. All right, y'all. See you in a bit. Bye. Welcome back. Well, my uh, merge chiller has been working really hard at getting it from 213 degrees down to 74.3 as we speak. I think that's about as low as we're going to go. As I say that, it goes on to 74.2. We're going to go ahead and get that transferred over there into the fermenter. We're going to let the glycol chiller finish this job for us. Took a gravity reading on it. Checked it out. Came out to 1072. Kind of missed the mark a little bit. I'm not sure where I went wrong on that. Starting to think maybe I didn't boil off quite as much as I should have. We did have a few issues with the boil. It's fine. We're supposed to be at 1082. So, you know, we missed about a whole 10 points. It is what it is. The ABV just won't be as high.
I mean, it's a beautiful color. Can't wait to see what this tastes like. We're going to go ahead and kill the pumps. Shut this off. So much foam. Bring our line over from the fermenter. Give me. And we're going into the top of the fermenter, splashing the wort in. That way it aerates. It causes a lot of oxygen. Then we're going to pitch our yeast. Yeast will be happy. All right, here we go. Let's send it. Beautiful color, y'all. Y'all see that color? Beautiful color. This is going to be a good barley wine. I can't wait to see what this tastes like when it's done. So we're going to go ahead and get this racked over into the fermenter. Then uh, throw our bubbler on top of it. And as soon as this gets down to pitching temperature, we'll bring y'all back. We'll pitch the yeast. And uh, then we'll see y'all in two weeks after that. All right, y'all. See y'all in a little bit. Bye. Got it down to 65 degrees. Good enough to pitch. So we're going to go ahead and pitch everything. We've sprayed, out, we've sprayed all this down, sprayed my hands down with star sand. So now we're ready to go ahead and pitch this yeast in here. And pop these lids that don't want to pop because glycol system in action. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. Go ahead and pitch these yeasts. Got two packs of this yeast. That's a one. And that's a two. Pair of yeast, ale house, ale one. Hopefully in two weeks' time, we're down where we need to be, where we can keg this and, uh, and forget about it for three to six months. Hope you all enjoyed us brewing this uh, barley wine here. Hopefully it comes out good. All right, y'all. See you all next time. Bye. Welcome back, guys. Uh, bring you all back in to go ahead and do a short little kegging video. This is that barley wine. It's been... Uh, Two weeks now, and let's see. We started at 1072. We finished at 1012 for 8.28 percent ABV. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this kegged, and once it's kegged, it's gonna go into the big keyser on CO2, and we're gonna forget about this for the next 90 days. All right, go ahead and get this started. Y'all seen me do this already a couple times. Y'all know how how this system works since I can't force carb it, uh, force carb it, force close transfer it. Gonna get that going, get this keg filled up, get it sealed up real good. I've already star sand everything. So, uh, should be good to go. All right, y'all. Next time y'all see us with this beer, it'll be 90 days from now when we're uh, trying it out for the first time. All right, y'all. Later. The all-in-one system is singing the song of his people. Song of his people is saying. <laughs> All right. Lord. Well, let that drain for a minute. Entertain them with a song or a dance yeah. or Batman's head on the lance. It doesn't matter. Make it quick. <laughs> I hear him yelling about something in there. Kind of interesting. Bay, you good? See, you could have entertained them with a song. And a dance. And Batman's head on the lance. Yes. Sing something. Do something. I know. No uh, one wants to hear me sing. Trust. Okay. So just say pause. Pause. Okay. It's done. Drippy drip. Drippy drip drip. Ooh. Well, what you cooking in there like that? That's some good Cajun water right some there. Some good Cajun water? <laughs> Straight by you, water? No, no, no. <laughs> Don't get people questioning that. Right? Ow. That kind of hurt. Ugh. Look, I gave myself a raise.
<laughs> is 60 minutes. 60 minute ball? Sure is. Good job. Good job. And go. Hey, I hit the button this time. How about that? 